Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Luke Nelson, and this is Jim Miller. Uh, we're going to present a, a trip that we did last summer with a bunch of people from ADK, including several people in the audience. Uh, we're going to go through just a few slides and some background on the trip, and then show a, a bunch of pictures and talk through them. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know, and uh, we'll get going. Day of the trip. Uh, 
Uh, these are the hikes that we took. Uh, not everybody was on every single hike, but we did hike every single day. Uh, some long mile hikes, a lot of elevation gain, but they were all fabulous hikes. Uh, the night before, when we left, we stayed uh, in a small town close to the airport so we could take off. Uh, early the next morning, uh, Ryan drove back and went to a lot of different places along the way. My friend Aaron drove the van to meet his wife out there. And I think we're going to show some pictures now.
Uh, and as Dave said, it um, typically water absorbs most of the visible spectrum of light except for blue. It reflects blue back, so you get blue lakes and blue oceans. Uh, what the silt in the uh, glacier-fed lakes did is it, um, it absorbs some of the blue, it reflects more of the green. So that's why you get this really beautiful uh, turquoise color. So this is a cracker lake. Here's a view actually from the shoreline. Can you get a real feel for the color of the, the water? It's, it's, it's really a spectacular. Uh, here's another example of Brunel Lake. And again, um, you can kind of see that turquoise color. So I'm going to walk you through two hikes that we did. One was on Sae Pass. Uh, so we started uh, along the going to the Sun Road. Now the whole road wasn't open yet, so this was early. Uh, but this part of the road was open, so we could drive up here and we could start here, hike over the pass, and then come down on the side. Uh, going up towards the pass, this is the view going up towards the pass. Here's the, here's the crew. It was relatively dry on this side. Uh, and as you notice, uh, Lou pointed out, um, a lot of the trail is covered with uh, the sedimentary rock, the shale, right? The, a lot of the glacier is more sedimentary rock and less of the granite that you see in a lot of the Rockies. Uh, here we are at the uh, top of the pass. Um, at the top of the pass, we met another couple. I think we were the only people who had done this, this hike this year. Uh, the couple had started to go down and got a little nervous. And so uh, they were heading back and they met us at the top of the pass. They kind of took our picture. But this is what they were nervous about on the other side. There was a lot of snow, a lot of snow fields on the other side, so the, the path wasn't clear. Um, so well, we went down, uh, and they followed us. They felt a little bit safer in a bigger group. Uh, and um, it was clear in places where you could see, uh, here we are uh, on the trail, and the switchbacks going down. But in other cases, we had to cross the snow fields uh, and traverse them. Luckily, we all, we all had micro spikes. Um, so we had to uh, cross a lot of the snow fields to pick up the trail on the other side. But occasionally we took the express route. <laughs> and this is a very, very long butt slide. And you can see this air, and you can see when it gets to the bottom, he, he's going pretty fast. Now he's worried, now he's going to start kicking up some snow. <laughs> there is a rock field in front of me, right? He's going to have to, have to stop at some point. <laughs> yeah, so, so that, that was kind of fun. Alright, so then when you get over the pass and down to the valley, this is the view, and this is a uh, little chief mountain in the back. Um, and this, this peak, it's got a very distinctive uh, high peak. It was a really beautiful valley. Uh, and um, so let me tell you a little bit. So Luke showed you some pictures of fires, right? We're, we're very attuned to fires, right? We just, we just breathed a lot of fire smoke recently. Um, and in Glacier National Park, there's been a fire, at least one fire almost every single year. The most, I think, was in 1936 when there were 64 fires. Most recently, the worst year was in, in 2003, where six major fires burned 13% so that was a serious fire. I want to point out, um, in 2015, it was the Reynolds Creek fire. It was unusual because it, it's, it burned on both sides of the going to the Sun Road. That's this yellow line coming from here. And this is the extent of the fire. So when we were coming down from Siding Pass, we were coming down to this valley. So we're going to enter into this uh, fire zone. And eight years later, you can see the trees are still just bare, right? You just have these white, dead trees that you hike through. Um, and that's pretty, pretty surreal, but it got very interesting at the bottom of that because the, the dead trees were now filled in with all this bare grass. And it really felt like you were walking through an alien environment. These dead white trees, this is Reinhardt and Aaron, um, and then this tall bare grass. Now this was the only time that we encountered uh, rain, the entire week almost. Um, and so we got a little bit of rain on the bottom, but that was okay because uh, that gave Brian Hart an opportunity to whip out his rain skirt. Uh, and he was prepared for the weather, he was fine. 
Now, little did we know at this point that this would foretell the upcoming hiker fashion show. <laughs> and uh, this pose itself, I think, is maybe on the cover of the uh, advertisement for that hiker show. Maybe uh, you could negotiate that with me. All right, so the next hike I, I'm going to go through is this hike where we started at Manny Glacier uh, and hiked along the uh, valley. So this is that same valley I showed you in the beginning with that string of um, glacier links. And I'll show you another picture of it at the end. And we were going to hike up to Swift Current Pass uh, with the ultimate goal of maybe going to Swift Current Mountain. But this was a long hike with a lot of elevation just to get to the top of the pass. So here's the, the crew he uh, heading out. Uh, that's Grinnell, uh, Mount Grinnell in the background. Uh, this is just a you know, view going up, but it points out to me the, the sedimentary rock. And I, I was always struck at Glacier because it feels more like in the southwest where you see these, these colorful bands in the sedimentary rock, as opposed to um, a lot of the pictures that they were showing where you have a lot of granite extrusion through the, um, and you see mostly granite rock. Where here we see a lot of sedimentary rock in the colors. Oops. Uh, this is the hike up. These, you know, these are, um, I think, the sheep. I can never really tell the difference between the mountain sheep and the mountain goats. Uh, but a, a little uh, ewe, or kid, if it's a goat. Um, but you can see this is uh, early, you know, in the summer, so they're still shedding. So you can see the winter coat that was on this uh, female uh, versus a, the lighter summer coat. Uh, this one's definitely a goat, and again, you can see where it's shedding. So we get uh, up to the top of the pass, which was a really perfectly fine hike. I, you know, when you're hiking with somebody, camping with somebody for eight days, you learn all sorts of things about them. And one of the things I learned about Reinhardt was that if you take him to the bottom of the mountain and he can see the summit, he will climb it. It's a truth. <laughs> so when we got to the top of the pass, and I thought this was a great hike, that was our original goal. Right up to the summit, and so we did an extra mile and an extra couple thousand feet <laughs> to get to the top of Swift Current Mountain. The Swift Current Mountain is the highest place in the park that you can hike to on a trail. So off we went uh, up the trail. Again, you can see all this screen that Luke was pointing at. Um, it was worth it. The, height, uh, the views from the top were fantastic. Uh, this is Swift Current Glacier uh, and Angel Wing in the back here. And then occasionally we'd see these bursts of wildflowers. The wildflowers, when you're up here, the ground is so dry and rocky, you think, how can this burst of flowers, how does it find its spot? I mean, it's just, it's really remarkable. Uh, here's a view coming down, here, here's my part. This, I think, is the quintessential glacier shot for me. You know, the, the scree field, the mountains in the background, and it's just, it was really spectacular. All right, so this is then uh, hiking down from Swift Current Pass. This is a string of uh, lakes I showed you in the beginning. This is the trail coming down, and you can see all the, the sedimentary rock uh, in the end. And that's it. Thank you very much.
Who chose them? Uh, well, so the bears, we, we saw a couple of bears. In fact, Reinhardt, on, on our last hike, uh, on the way back, there was a grizzly uh, just about maybe 20 yards off the trail. Uh, it was in the bushes, so we didn't get a really good picture. But Reinhardt told me it was the first time he had ever seen a bear on the trail. And on that way back, I think he was about three feet off the ground walking. He was so happy to have a county of a bear on the trail. Um, we had bear spray with us, but you know, the bears that we ran into, they, you know, they're park bears for the most part. So as long as you don't scare them or get between the mama bear and the cub, you're, you're not so bad. And then the other, oh, choosing the hikes. So, um, I don't know, we made a whole list of hikes. We had a bunch. There's a, um, is it, it's Jake. Jake is a, Jake has this map he publishes of the best hikes in, he's done Glacier, he's done Yellowstone, he's done Olympic National Park, he's done several national parks. Uh, and we use that as a little bit of a guide. Is he down like the top of the 25? Yeah, top 50 hikes or so. We, we hiked a bunch of his like the top 25 hikes. So was there one person who chose the hikes or did you do it sort of as a group, maybe democratically? Yeah, pretty much. So we, we had uh, we had printed out a whole bunch of options, and then each night we decided where we were going to go the next day. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, what was the campground like? Was it a primitive campground or? Um, no, it wasn't primitive. There were no showers, okay. uh, but it did have toilets and, and things like that, and it had bear boxes, yeah. which were really convenient for storing your food for the um, for the campground. It, it was it was not the most upscale campground, but it was it was really pleasant. It wasn't that crowded, and it was like I said, it was on going to the Sun Road, which made that really easy. And there was enough there was enough bathrooms around the campground that you didn't have to walk a long, long ways to where you were. And they were very very strict, which is good about leaving food out. So the rangers were constantly walking around and then chastising. Thanks very much.